So what if I told you that you could create a scene just like these in as little as two minutes? This is just crazy, right? And what if I told you that this was much, much faster to work with, model with, and render than using displacement maps? Yeah, it's real geometry. Geometry you can modify, texture map, move around, and even export in highly optimized formats. Or if you want, you can create all of this as a matching displacement map as well. Yeah, crazy. And here's where it's really special. What if I told you that anything, and I mean anything you create with this, is yours, free, to keep and do with whatever you want. Use it in a commercial project, package it, sell it, up to you. It's 100% yours. So what are we talking about? Greasy Bear and I have been working together to create this new product we call Simple Sci-Fi. And man, is it easy and fun to use. So what is it? Well, it's a displacement and geometry generator that can create hundreds, no thousands, really even millions of displacement maps and matching color maps along with real geometry, all with an interface which is stupidly simple to use. Oh, and did I mention there's a completely free version too? Yeah, you heard that right. Free to use however you like. And of course, we do have a pro version as well. Simple Sci-Fi, at its core, is really a cool Blender file, which includes some special magic in the form of geometry nodes and D-Packs. So what are D-Packs? D-Packs are the building blocks of these futuristic sci-fi scenes, and the free version comes with three different D-Packs, one for shapes, one for geometry, and one for creating lighting maps, which we call dots. And with the pro version, there are many more D-Packs. And it also comes with some really cool extras as well, including some nice kit bashing stuff that you can optionally use to add to your scene. Also, with the pro version, not only do you get six extra D-Packs, plus all the kit bashing files, you also get our introductory pricing. And like our other products, you'll get the updates for free, including new D-Packs. Not to mention the price will eventually go up as we add more features. Furthermore, there are others creating simple sci-fi D-Packs and add-ons. Here are a couple. Brenya has this cool D-Pack called Dezorus, which looks pretty darn sweet. And Anthony Araguas has a neat vertex painting add-on, which is super handy if you want to create your own D-Packs. Look for both of them on Blender Market and Gumroad. So, how does all of this work? Well, let's take a quick look and see. Okay, and welcome to Simple Sci-Fi, and this is the actual pro version. And in the pro version, we have the pro D-Packs already loaded in for you. Basic version, you have only the basic ones loaded in. The pro's got a lot more, and we're going to be adding more to it as we go. So when you first jump into it, know that the show overlays is turned off. And so if you turn it on, you can see what's going on. But we're going to keep it off so that we can better tell how we're modifying our geometry. So here we are in the shapes gen. And right now we've got this geometry node modifier, and it's got a bunch of controls. And so let's talk about those. First one, Black background is one or zero, whether you want it on or off. I'm going to leave it off. Typically in shapes, it kind of works better if you leave it off, I think. Uh, but up to you. These collections, actually, you can see anything that starts with the word shapes is a good idea to put in here. But notice this MP. MP is, stands for non-proportional. And so if I look at these shapes, I'm going to go ahead and make the density zero on this proportional density. I'm going to move this density up. So if we start to look at these, and I'm gonna change the size also. So if you look at the non-proportional shapes, you'll see that they can easily be stretched in both the X and Y direction. And of course, the engine automatically does that randomly for you. You can adjust these, not only the density, but also the size, right? So we can move the size and the density. If we go to proportional, and again, we can look in here and look for shapes. And we look for shapes P, and we can basically choose any shapes with a P on it, it's going to give us proportional shapes here. And so, again, we'll actually adjust the density and we'll adjust the size. And I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. So you can start to see that a lot of these have circular elements, which wouldn't work very well if you started to distort them. And then we have this rose. And let's look at rose. Rose is actually, if you look at this object, you'll see that we can you know, have as many rows or as few rows as we want. Four seems to be a good number. By the way, hit zero on the num pad to get back into the camera view and you're good to go. That's a very simple explanation of the shapes gen. So let's go ahead quickly and let's adjust this a little bit so we can get something that looks kind of good. Once we're done, we can basically start scrolling through this seed number, right? And just kind of just generating new versions until we like something. And then once we're done, we can just go over and we can just say render, render image. 
And once you start to render an image, one, one thousand, two, you know, it's like under two seconds, right? So we're going to go here and we'll look at this image. So one thing about this displacement map that we just created is that if we go to save this, it wants to save as an open EXR 32-bit image. And that's really important. And let me tell you why. So when you use a 32-bit displacement image to create a mesh, you'll see that you get these incredibly smooth ramps like this. And that's not possible with an 8-bit ping. And also you get these great cylinder shapes as well as sphere shapes. So it's definitely worth your while to use 32-bit images versus 8-bit images when you're doing displacement. So that's something to keep in mind. Anytime you're rendering a displacement map, render it out as an open EXR. When you're talking about rendering resolution, you can do it at 4K or 8K. Let's just take a look at what we have here. So we have it set up at 8K, but I rendered out at 50%. So that means it's going to be a 4K. But if you want to render out an 8K, just bump that up to 100 and you're good. So the last thing we'll talk about is this render material button. And if I move it from 0 to 1, it's a switch on or off. It's going to show us the colors, right? And then I can go in here and I can just click on any of these colors and I can adjust them however I like. You know, whatever I want to do with them, I can do. Uh, I can actually move these sliders around if I want to. That gives me some, some other control. And once I'm done here, I'll hit the F12 key or I'll hit the render button. And again, it'll take me a very quick time to render it up. But in this case, when I'm rendering color, I want to make sure that I'm rendering this as not an open EXR, but as a ping. And we're going to do an 8-bit ping. And that is the best format to save for that. And you're saying, well, why is that? Why would we use the 32-bit? Well, because when you put this into Blender or you know any other game engine, for instance, the GPU is going to load up either the 32 bits or it's going to load up the 8-bit. And the 32-bit is going to be significantly larger and take up a lot more of your GPU space. So when you're doing something like this image right here, and this image is a perfectly matched image to your displacement. So you drop this on top of your displacement and you're going to get matching geometry with the color. And if you do that in 32-bit, you're going to end up chewing up a lot of your GPU memory, preferably that you just render these out in 8-bit. And also, these are also used for side maps as well. We use them for qubit projections on things. And if you want to learn more about that, you can jump over to my sci-fi series where I talk about using displacement maps to create amazing sci-fi scenes. And there's a four-part series here. And I think if you jump into this, it's going to walk you through very quickly how to use displacement maps in Blender. That's our shapes generator. Let's go into our dots generator. And the dots generator is much like the shapes generator. I'm going to go in and click on here and then I'll be into this modifier. And the dots generator for is to create kind of the lights that you would see in a city or a sci-fi scene, right? And again, we have the proportional and the non-proportional collections. Just choose whichever one you want and then change the density and the size. And here's the proportional one. And then again, you'll go ahead and render out. You can you can turn off them. If you just want to render an emissive map, then you can do it this way. Or you can turn it on and you can render the actual colors. Again, you can adjust those colors down here. So that's pretty much very similar to what the shapes generator does. The really cool one is this geometry generator. So let's talk about that for a second. I'm going to click on this. We'll go in here. Now we have two different collections in the geometry generator. I'm going to zoom in here. You can see. So we have this, this the, the top collection, which are these brighter ones, and this lower collection, which are the darker ones. What we want to do is, you know, again, load up whatever collection we're going to use, and then we'll just adjust the density, you know. And here's the bottom one. I'm going to just change, change the size. Now I'm actually adding tons of polygons. I mean, in fact, I'll turn this on. We're at 839,000. I haven't even started here, so I'll start adding some more here. So once I've adjusted these, I'll go over here to the seed, and I'll start scrolling. If I hold the control key down after I've entered this field, it'll scroll by even increments, and that's basically the way seed works. Move it around till you find something you like, and now I just want to basically save a copy of this. Save as, and, and then I just do a new scene, delete everything in the scene, and then I'll go into that same file I just saved. And I'll go into the collection. And I'm looking for the GeoGen, which is the smallest one on here. Oh, actually, Temp, it might be a little smaller. But this is the one that we want. We'll du double click on that. Then I'll immediately go in. I'll hide the original objects that it used to create this. And now you can see we've got this collection. It doesn't look like much yet, but it's going to get there. So first things first, let's go to the modifiers. And let's turn on the material preview. And I'm going to turn off this display. Now you can start to see this is starting to take shape. And you're starting to see what it looks like. Then I want to select this object and I'm going to change this to CW Gen material. Now that it's done that, we can start to edit that material and change the way this looks. And that's done with all of these. So this is pretty straightforward. The dot map already has one in it, comes default. 
Here it is. We imported it. When we imported the collection, you can change it here by hitting the X button and then loading a new one. So let's start with the dot lights. So as I look down here, we can see that we can actually adjust the lights, the scale of the lights. I'm going to go, as I go smaller, they get bigger. So you can start to see how they're getting bigger. One's probably a good number. You can adjust the brightness and contrast. And if you have Node Wrangler turned on, which I like to do, is I just come in here and control shift click on here and it's going to show me you know these are this is the color dots that i have right there and you know if i want to jack up the brightness i could basically go like something like this and then jack up the contrast and i'm going to get brighter dots down i'm going to control shift click here and i can see what's going on okay next i'm going to basically go over here and i'm going to look at this object material and the first thing is the color and so if i control shift click here i see the color and there's a lot of different colors, but I'm gonna turn this top and the side mix off. So this is just the top mix. And if I can come in here now and at any of these, any of these colors I can change, right? So I can come in here and maybe I wanna make this maybe a little more, you know, I don't know, different, just a different color, something like that. So I can change this, but do not change these slider positions. These are all mapped accurately to the vertex colors of the objects. So leave those alone, but you can certainly change uh, any of the colors here and then once you're done you can move this back and that's the full-on side so we don't we're not using any of these colors now we're just using this side and what we want probably is a mix and i like uh, personally i like you know, 0.25 or something like that and you say well where that red come from well that red's coming from that side map that we used let me show you that real quick so here is the side the side map and that's getting mapped in a cubic projection on the whole model, and that's how that works. And that's why you want a lot of detail in this map. Remember, this is an 8-bit ping. Here's the dots map, same thing, it's cubic projected, and it's an 8-bit ping. All of these settings you can play around with. For instance, here's the metallic. Notice that nothing is metallic right now. If I come in, turn metallic on, everything's metallic. But if I use this threshold button, you know, you can start to see, you know, what's metallic, what's not. Uh, and you can adjust things and you can actually invert that as well. So you can change things, you know, from one to the other. The same thing's true with roughness. So click here. Now we're connected to the roughness and you can see that we have brightness and contrast. If I move the brightness up just a little bit, I'm making everything less reflective, right? So I come here, cl control click here. You can see, you know, the metallic stuff is, is metallic. Now, remember, this is everything metallic. That's nothing metallic, right? So I can just adjust the actual threshold for what, what's metallic. And as you look at it, it's very metallic. Like look at the reflections in here. But if you adjust that brightness up just a little bit, you'll start to see that, you know, that goes away. So you can use that, the brightness and the contrast to adjust your metallic settings as well. And we have things like normal. You can adjust this normal. And I like to use a higher strength for normal when you're rendering in cycles versus EV. So in fact, if we look at this and we go and look at it in cycles, these bump maps on the side don't look as strong. Back to EV. Uh, and then we have the side ping settings. So we talked about what the side ping is. So let's look at those. You know, uh, I can adjust the scale of it. And as you see what happens when we adjust the scale and I've, I can move the X lock around. If I hold the shift key down, of course, you know, it mo things move a lot slower, right? So as I start dragging, so there's the Y lock. So you can adjust these. Uh, and then brightness and contrast. And so that's really all there is to it. You know, at this point, all we need to do is just add a camera, control alt zero on a numpad to set the camera view. And then under view, we'll just say, lock the camera to viewport, select something, and we'll just move it around. Something like, maybe like this. I think I'll come into this side mix. I'm gonna move this even a little lower like that. And then uh, look at our shading and you see what we've got. You know, if you look at my world, I'm using a Nishida light. Uh, sun, so I'm going to basically move the elevation to something like 25, and I want to move the rotation down towards me a little bit. There we go, something like that. And then we'll just hit the render button. And that's all there is to it. You can see it rendered in what, uh, 26 seconds, uh, uh, 1920 by 1080, so that's uh, pretty good. One of the advantages of this workflow is that you can do this on a much less powerful machine than you typically would use for displacement mapping. Jump on over to Gumroad or Blender Market, grab yourself a copy of either the free version or the pro version, and uh, hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you online.